Hi guys, welcome to tonight's live chat. Tonight we are talking about nighttime sleep. So I've got a bunch of questions from you guys that I'm going to be answering and I have my top three tips on how to um, get great nighttime sleep out of your child no matter how old they are. So these three tips will be relevant for newborns, babies, younger babies, older babies and toddlers. So I'm just going to wait for some people to jump online and then I'm going to give you my top three tips for better nighttime sleep regardless of how old um, your little one is and then I'm going to get crack into answering some of your questions about your children's nighttime sleep. I've got a big list of them here. Hi Christina, yes please say hi if you are watching live because I know lots of people um, Hi Libby, watch these later on. So if you have joined us live, please jump into the comments and say hi. Hi Caroline, I'm going to be answering your questions tonight about nighttime sleep. And I'm just posting some links into the comments of this um, video guys. Hi Angela, hi Kerry, because these are common links that you guys will probably want as we're chatting. Okay, so the first link I'm gonna chuck in here is for our toddler routines because we all know that good daytime sleep helps with good nighttime sleep so I will pop the link for our toddler and our baby routines they're in the comments hi Stacy so these are all those are up there ready for you if you are looking for a daytime routine just click on those links and they will get emailed into your inbox so you can grab them from there if they don't appear it is automatic guys so they're probably in your junk mail Hi Christina, interested to hear some stuff as my seven month old still wakes. Well, I see some questions already asked about seven month olds, so that's fantastic. I will get to those in a second. Just scrolling down on my computer um, to find your questions, guys. Cool, I've got them. Okay, so before we get started on your questions, I'm going to tell you the three things, my three kind of top tips for better nighttime sleep, which anybody any age can put into place. Um, okay, so number one, if we want really good nighttime sleep, and it doesn't matter if your definition of really good nighttime sleep is your 12 week old sleeping for four hours in a row, or your one year old sleeping for 12 hours in a row, no matter what your current definition is for really good nighttime sleep, we need to make sure your children are well fed because hungry kids don't sleep well at night. So whether that means they're having really awesome breastfeeds during the day and there's no latching issues, um, or whether they're bottle fed and they're getting good bottles during the day, if they're having solids, they're having really good nutritious solids, largely homemade with a good portion of um, protein in there if they're over sort of six, seven, eight months. And if they're toddlers, making sure that they're getting, you know, three really good nutritious meals a day because hungry kids or children who are lacking in those sort of essential vitamins and minerals that we need to sleep well at night, don't sleep well at night. So number one is make sure your kids are really well fed. If in doubt, it's probably not the right time to work on nighttime sleep. Um, maybe work on your diet or your daytime feeding first. Number two for my top three things that we need to have in place if we want to establish really good nighttime sleep is that your child can resettle themselves. So overnight, we all know that children are gonna wake up, okay? And the people who kind of really hate sleep consultants and hate what we do say that, you know, it's biologically normal for every child to wake up overnight. And I don't dispute that, 110% I agree. All children wake up overnight. I wake up overnight, you wake up overnight. The thing is, if your child is old enough and they can put themselves back to sleep after they're at the end of a sleep cycle or waking up from a strange dream or waking up because they rolled over and knocked their head on the side of the crib, then they can put themselves back to sleep. You don't have to get out of bed and go and rock them back to sleep or feed them back to sleep or pace around the house for six hours to get them back to sleep. So if your child can get themselves back to sleep, what we call resettling overnight, then we're setting ourselves up for really awesome nighttime sleep. Uh, and number three of my top three tips for better nighttime sleep is that your child, again any age, newborn, baby, toddler, doesn't go to bed overtired in the evening. Okay, so this is something which you can start fixing literally tomorrow night. It's that easy to fix. If your child is going to bed overtired, so 
they're having rubbish naps during the day, I can't fix that tomorrow, I can't fix that in a day. Um, or they have a rubbish last nap of the day, or you're really busy and you're out all day tomorrow, or they have a terrible night tonight and they're just overtired all day tomorrow. I can't solve that in a blip, but what I can solve is they're not going to be an overtired tomorrow night. And we can solve that by putting them to bed earlier. It's as simple as that. So if you've had a rubbish day or you've had a rubbish afternoon and you can tell your child's getting really cranky and tired, combat that overtiredness with a significantly earlier bedtime, okay? Because an undertired child is gonna go to bed and probably chat, play, roll around, play with a zip on their sleeping bag, um, and eventually fall asleep. Whereas an overtired child, baby or toddler, is more likely to cry, um, you know, scream, get upset, and need a lot of help falling asleep because they're so ramped up on stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol that um, it's really hard for them to fall asleep, guys. So you can really quickly and really easily get on top of overtiredness literally tomorrow night. Tonight it's too late, it's already past seven. Um, but if you are dealing with overtiredness, put them to bed a, a, you know, a significant amount earlier tomorrow night and see if that helps with your nighttime sleep. So that's my top three things. Take away, if this is the only part of the video you watch and you leave, make sure your child is well fed, work on teaching them to resettle themselves and make sure they don't go to bed overtired. And you're pretty much guaranteed to get a better night's sleep um, if those three things are in place. And I can tell you that um, our consultants will pretty much always address those three things when we work with you one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Ivana, I bought the sleep guide and it works. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. My girl is one now and has been sleeping through the night, 10 months, 6 to at least 5.30, if not later. And I see dot, dot, dot on there, Ivana. I will come back later and try and read the rest of your question. But that is fantastic to hear that the sleep guide was working for you. Okay, so I'm going to answer. Hi, Maz, I see your question. I'm going to answer the ones from the list first, and then I'm going to come into those live questions here, okay? So... Please ask me your questions and I will do my best to answer as many as possible. So Kate has said, Hi Emma, just wondering if you have any tips for getting my eight month old baby to settle himself to sleep at night. He's currently able to self settle pretty well throughout the night, but to put him to bed we have to spend 20 minutes rocking and singing. So Kate is struggling with the actual bedtime settling. Um... Sorry, I just got distracted by Lottie's question. He has a dummy and we use white noise, but no cuddly or anything else. We just leave him in the end. He will either cry, or if we just leave him, he will either cry or think it's playtime and crawl around his cot. So Kate, if he is crying, he's probably tired and needs to go to sleep. He is eight months old. He can put his own dummy in himself, so I would let him do that. I wouldn't do it for him. And if he's playing and crawling around the cot, like I said before, um, he's probably a little bit undertired, and that's cool, he can go to bed when he's undertired. He will eventually get tired enough to lie down and go to sleep. So I would simply stop rocking and singing him to sleep, knowing that he has a dummy or a pacifier, so he can pop that in himself. And if you want to check on him every five minutes or so and make sure he's got the dummy in his hand, that would work. Just walk in and pop it in his hand and then leave. Um, you know, he's eight months, he can totally do this. Or you could sit next to the cot and every five minutes give him back that dummy and if he's crawling around you might say, you know, lie down at sleep time. Um, but, you know, for some children that might be a little bit too interactive and they might think that um, you are interacting and it's playtime. So just watch that you don't need to tone that back if that is what you are doing. But be rest assured, at eight months with a dummy, he absolutely does not need you to sing and rock him to sleep. He can pick up that dummy, put it in him, his mouth himself and get himself off to sleep at bedtime. I would make sure, Kate, that you have downloaded my routines, the links are in the comments, and just have a look if your bedtime needs to be adjusted too late, too early, based on what's in the routines for his age. That will probably help you out as well. Erica, my seven month old has been waking a lot during the night in the last month or so. We used to be able to just pop his dummy back in, he would sleep. Now he wants to be fed two to three times a night. He goes to bed around 6.30 until 7 or 8 a.m. He's never been a day sleeper. Occasionally we get the odd two hour sleep in the morning, then two 30 minute sleeps in the afternoon. Okay, Erica, so what happens when we have a big long morning sleep and then short afternoon sleeps is that our children are awake from sort of midday until bedtime with only sort of 20 or 30 minute blocks of sleep. And by the time they go to bed at night, they're really overtired 
And remember those three things I talked about, we don't want them going to bed overtired. So fixing your seven month old's daytime routine will probably help largely with your nighttime sleep. The other thing to think about around seven months is that between seven and eight months, he can totally learn to pop that pacifier in himself. And if he's refusing to and he's getting upset, it might be that he is hungry and he needs some more solids during the day, or one feed a night perhaps, and the other ones now might have become quite habitual. And you might have to gradually wean those down as you increase his daytime solids and pop that dummy in his hand, like I talked about with Kate, and let him put it in himself. If he has something like a sleepy tot, he can use that to, you know, to hold on to and pop the dummy in. Um, there's one on my shelf up there, one of those bunnies. He that can um, hold the pacifiers for him. But still, at seven months, he's really similar to Kate's boy at eight months. He can totally do that himself. And if not, you will be definitely on the track to teaching him to doing it himself. So be confident that he can learn that. Anna, my seven and a half, this is a really popular age. Seven and a half month old has been sleeping seven till seven with one wake around four. But for the last few weeks, he's been waking at least twice and only wants a feed. He's well established on three meals a day, but sleeps from nine till, oh, well during the day, nine to 9.30 and then 12.30 to 2.30. Oh, yep, cool. This all started around the time he learned to commando crawl. I've tried to resettle him a few with a few strategies, but he just wants a feed twice a night. So, Anna, when they learn to commando crawl or crawl or or roll over or stand up or walk, they go through quite a um, physical development, you know, and, and a physical milestone, and it's really common for it to disturb their sleep at night. Their brain is building a whole lot of new brain synapses as they learn that new skill, and that alone can wake our babies up at night. So that could be what's going on, um, and he's waking up because of that. Also, they can wake up simply wanting to practice their new skill of commando crawling around the cot in the middle of the night, just like us when we like start a new job, and then that night we wake up in the middle of the night thinking about the new job and all the things we learned that day, you know. Um, really similar situation, they just want to practice that skill. We need to make sure that we don't fall into those habits of when they do wake up because they want to crawl, of feeding them back to sleep. So, since you are already in that cycle of feeding him back to sleep, I would simply cut him back to one feed a night because he is nearly eight months, he's having solids, um, and unless something drastic has happened with his feeding during the day, he probably doesn't need it. And at those other wake ups, just allow him to crawl laps around the cot if he wants to. If he gets upset, you know, I'll put my hand on him and shush him for a little bit, and then either sit by the cot or leave the room for a few minutes, and let him figure out how to get himself from crawling back to sleep. And that's the skill he needs to learn. I need to learn to go from awake and crawling around the cot to when I'm ready, lying back down and going back to sleep. And if we keep doing that for him, he won't learn that skill. But it's okay to reassure him and comfort him, but don't take away that opportunity for him to learn that skill in that time. And be really patient, um, because he's going through some massive changes with learning to crawl and getting established on solids and all that kind of stuff that happens in that six to eight month gap. Stacey, seven month old, who was previously sleeping. I swear you guys could all be in some kind of club. Um, 6.30 to 7 has now been waking anywhere from 1.30 to 4.30 every night. Um, I don't believe she's hungry. She's on three meals a day. She's still breastfed. When I wake, I leave her to grizzle for 15 minutes. Then I go in and turn her back if she's out of the covers. Usually she's still tucked in fine. So if she is out of the covers, Stacey, I would probably switch her, um... And even if she's not getting out of the covers, switch her to a sleeping bag. So something like the Merino Kids um, sleeping bag, which means she can sleep anywhere in the cot and she will not be cold if she moves because just like, um, whose baby was it? Anna's baby. They're going to crawl around the cot and they won't stay under the covers. So swap to a sleeping bag and they won't wake up cold at night. But so you're saying she's usually still under the covers. <laughs> And you have to go back in multiple times over an hour or two. And during the day, she's sleeping 9.30 to 11 and 1.30 to 3.30. So, Stacy, at seven months, that is three and a half hours sleep. I think that might be a little bit too much daytime sleep, Stacy. And, um, oh, you're welcome, Anna. Stacy, I would cut that back a smidgen. So, three and a half hours sleep, I would be aiming for more like two and a half hours. And then there will be more of that homeostatic you know, 
pressure to sleep at night than there is at the moment, um, which will help that nighttime sleep, I think, to reconsolidate. I think at the moment she's making up for that fragmented, broken night sleep with longer sleep during the day. So I would swap that around a little bit. Danica, my now 13 week old, oh, we've got out of the seven month age group, was only having two feeds overnight and sleeping through to around eight. But the last couple of weeks he's been waking four to six times, sometimes can resettle, sometimes only settles with a feed. Also wants to start his day at 6.20. I know there is actually a few out there who would probably kill for a 6.20 wake up after daylight savings. I know a lot of people are still tackling those 5 a.m.s. He is now having reasonable naps and gets six breastfeeds during the day, feeling like a zombie. Okay, so you've got a 13-week-old who is waking frequently through the night. Danica, 13 weeks is a good time to start slowly backing off how much you're assisting to sleep. So if you're currently feeding to sleep, I would instead start to try to settle bubs in the cot or the bassinet. If they have had a feed, a feed, <laughs> if they've had a feed, um, less than sort of three hours ago, then I would try to resettle bubs in the in the cot or the bassinet. So some side settling, some shushing and padding, even pick up and cuddle if need be, but try to get bubs back to sleep without a feed and try to stretch those feeds back out to four hourly. Once you've sort of nailed that settling in the cot or the bassinet without um, having to feed, then we can start to back off how much padding um, or rocking we are doing because Bubs is 13 weeks, you know, we can just really gently back off how much we're helping and let them start to pick up more and more of those skills themselves. And that will lead to that nighttime sleep consolidating. Okay, Michelle, another seven and a half month old, who used to sleep 12 hours. I swear, this is so funny. Self-settling and then learnt to crawl. And then got the first tooth around six months. This is exactly the same as this other mum. Feels like somewhere around then she's been not waking most nights around 9.30, usually unsettled on and off um, until around 1 when she settles back into another bottle. She can easily self-settle to sleep initially with cuddly toys. She sucks on their feet and have tried a dummy with no luck. White noise, curtains, heater. She can't seem to resettle herself between 9.30 and 1, but then will sleep through from 1 until 7. So she has three meals a day, two naps, 9.30 to 10, 1 to 2.30, so she's having pretty good sleeps. Um, I would try, Michelle, slightly earlier bedtime, because that 9.30 wake up kind of tells me she might be a little bit overtired. So I would try a smidgen earlier bedtime, um, and especially because it's been going on for a while, she's probably accumulated some sleep debt. And then if Bubs is awake for a long period of time in the night like that, usually we as parents are inadvertently overstimulating our kids with what we're doing. So I would have a look at what you are doing to try and get her back to sleep and take it down, take it down a notch. Because I can see from your notes here, you say that, you know, um, she kicks it up another notch. And what usually happens with us parents, and it's totally natural, is that we then kick it up a notch. You know, they start crying more, so we start doing more. We swap from hand on the tummy shushing to picking them up and frantically pacing around the room or we throw in some bouncing or some rocking or we swap parents or we think maybe you're hungry and we get the teething gel or um or maybe you're teething <laughs> don't feed your kids teething gel maybe you're hungry and we feed them um and they still don't settle so we change their nappy you know but what we actually need to do is if they're bringing it up a notch we should just bring it down a notch and just try to be the rock in the in the storm and just really be really calm and consistent with one strategy. And that that calm consistency is what will teach her that actually nine to one is not this buzzy interactive time where mum does everything I can to get you back to sleep. It's actually this really calm, boring time where we should sleep. So that's what I think you probably need to do um, in order to get on top of that wake up. So if you need some help with that, get in touch because we might need to talk about what strategy you do choose in that time. But have a think and a sort of self-check with what you are doing and see if you can bring it back down a smidgen. Um, Amanda, and if you have just joined us, guys, I'm answering your questions about nighttime sleep. So if that's what you're after, you are in the right place. And if you are watching, please say hi in the comments um, or hit the thumbs up button so I know you are listening. Amanda, I started, I've started to get some long stretches from 7.30 to 3 or 4 for Miss 15 weeks. That's awesome. 
but the past week she has gone back to maybe getting to midnight then to hourly or less till seven she will only settle feeding and even then can be hard to put back into her cot i've been working on not feeding to sleep in the day and also longer than 45 minute naps but it made it worse <laughs> amanda okay cool so I don't think what you're doing during the day is linked to your nights unless it's just that suddenly Bubs is getting more sleep at night during the day so that she's trying to find her equilibrium of day and night balance. I wouldn't necessarily cut her day sleep. Um, but two hourly from midnight, unless something drastic has happened with Bubs's feed, feeding during the day, she probably doesn't need two hourly feeding from midnight, you know, maybe four hourly, so midnight, 4 a.m. and morning would be quite normal. So in that in-between wake up, I would work on settling without feeding. And that is what will keep that consistent pattern of longer sleep at night. Whereas if we quickly resort back to feeding on every wake up, then that quickly becomes the new pattern at night. Um, so at 15 weeks, you know, you'd probably still be quite hands-on with that settling in the bassinet, that sort of thing, the cot, um, pick up, cuddle, settle, calm down, pop back down, that sort of thing. Um, but working on not feeding every two hours is what will change that sort of cycle of habitual wake-ups every two hours. Okay, Louise, now we're going from newborn to 14 month old. Has been waking ever since she started crawling and doesn't stay under the covers. So Louise, I would recommend for you also a sleeping bag. These guys make them all the way up to two to four years. So 14 month old definitely can still fit in a sleeping bag. Hi Louise. Um, so swapped her sleeping bag and it's been about six weeks now. She normally wakes between 2 and 4 a.m. won't resettle without a bottle. Okay, she will resettle without a bottle, Louise. I promise you, promise you she will resettle without a bottle. Um, it's just going to be a matter of finding the right settling technique and giving her that space to learn to get from that awake and crawling state to back to sleep without having that bottle. The bottle for her is... Hi Cara, probably not hunger related. It's just that sucking is quite soothing for kids of all ages and she's using it to get back to sleep. So I would remove the bottle from the situation because like the feeding at the breast, that will just quickly become sort of a habitual situation where that's what Bubs needs to get back to sleep. And to be rest assured at 14 months, she can go from crawling to asleep. She just needs to learn how to, to navigate from awake and crawling to asleep. Give her some space to figure that out sit by her and support her through that if she needs it leave the room if you need to she's old enough for either or um yeah she says we've been advised to increase the amount of solids which we have done since she's waking i don't think it's hunger related louise if you've got good solids happening during the day i don't think that bottle is hunger related um and especially if you've increased the solids and the sleep hasn't changed at all so just do a, a decent diet check, but make sure there is a good diet going on, but it's probably just more a habitual thing due to the crawling, waking her up. Kirsty, my 16 month old, used to go to bed easily. So this is cool, we've kicked into the toddlers now. I'd give him a quick feed, then back to sleep. He got sick for over a month now and still waking once a night. So it's taken these guys two hours to get him back to sleep. He wants me in his room, so I've been sitting there till I think he's asleep, but sometimes he's been crying again after 10 minutes once I've left. So, Kirsty, this is really common. When we're dealing with toddlers, they can take sort of up to 40 minutes to fall back to sleep. So if you are wanting to sit with them in the night, which is totally cool, and especially if they've been sick or whatever, um, I tend to say maybe just take a pillow and a blanket and lie on the floor. Um, because you'll probably fall asleep for a few nights. But it just means that you're going to be warm and comfortable and not tempted to leave too soon, because if you leave too soon, this is the scenario you're in. Your toddler was in a really light sleep and they've woken up the second you left, or they've woken up 10 minutes later and you're gone. So I would wait until they're fast asleep, and then I would leave the room. Um, but also making sure that, you know, that two hours, is it because you keep leaving and coming back and that's taking two hours, or is it because like I talked about before, we're inadvertently overstimulating your toddler and this is keeping him awake. So just have a little check and maybe tone it back if we need to. Otherwise, if it's just the coming and going, then just sit there, you know, and just give it a week. If sitting there and being super boring or lie there and don't leave until he's fast asleep, and I know it can take 40 minutes, um, but that situation would quickly resolve itself if we're really consistent and boring. Hi, Michelle. Okay, Kay. 
another 12 month old, sleeps well, two and a half to three hours over two sleeps during the day. We might want to peg that back to just two and a half hours. Hi Tamara, we all. <laughs> Um, so Mr. 12 month olds in bed 6.30 to 7 but without, without fail will wake at 5, 5.15. He's warm in his sleeping bag, 20 degrees, has a lula, always still going. I honestly think he feels like he's had enough sleep and nobody wants a 5am wake up call. Wakes up chatty Cathy but quickly turns into a grump. Have two other kids, he wakes up and it's affecting their sleep. Not cool Mr. 12 months. Um, I agree, not cool. <laughs> Don't breastfeed him overnight as he's too reliant on milk rather than solids. So I have got over that hurdle. I treat like an overnight wake but he's having none of it and he's already wide awake. So okay, if you really think, <laughs> tomorrow I love watching you, you, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> if you really think he's had enough sleep then um, you could try and put him to bed later. And if he has had enough sleep, um, where's my wine Adrian? I have got green tea no it's not even green tea it's peppermint tea I lied um if you think he's had enough sleep try putting him to bed later try 7 30 and if that makes the 5 a.m wake up move then he has had enough sleep and that's him if it doesn't then it's a habitual wake up and that's a different thing to deal with so you might find um I'm not sure how you treat it as a nighttime wake up but um you might need to just not go in until seven o'clock in the morning that kind of thing but it is really hard to tackle early morning wake-ups. We have the masterclass on it if you're still stuck. But if you think he's had enough sleep, try a later bedtime and see what happens. And that will give you a clear answer. Chelsea, my 18-month-old started needing me to sit with her in her room to go to sleep for a nap and bedtime. There's a lot of separation anxiety at 18 months. This is quite common. She would stand and scream in her cot, so I sat in her room until she went to sleep. Great. Um... I'm still having to do this now and some nights she wakes and needs us in there. Sometimes having to lay down next to the cot if it's after five. It seems to get harder to get her back to sleep. Should I keep sitting in her room and gradually try to move further away? Chelsea, yes you should gradually move further away. But I notice your language there says gradually try to move further away. Um, you need to commit to moving further away. So don't go all half-hearted about it. Commit. Every couple of days move away from her cot and don't go back. And she will learn to sleep without you being right next to the cot. And consequently, hopefully not wake up overnight. Victoria, you and your consultants are awesome. Had Amy here just over a month ago and going, awesome. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Victoria, you are so welcome. We all love our job and feel incredibly blessed to be able to help you guys. So thank you. Uh, Rachel, my five and a half month old wakes every two to three hours all night. I can't get him to change. Then he's usually ready for the day at 4.35. Rachel, that's so early. Okay, I think the three things I spoke about at the start of the video, Rachel, matter most for you. Hi, Becky. Make sure that your five and a half month old is not hungry. So maybe it's time for solids. Make sure they're not overtired, which he will be really overtired from these frequent night wake-ups and early starts. So um, go with really early bedtime. And then what is it that he needs to go back to sleep overnight every two to three hours? We need to change that because for him, he's in that habit, you know, that habit cycle where his cue is that he wakes up crying every two to three hours. We go in and give him a dummy or we go in and feed him and he goes back to sleep for a couple of hours. And he's just in this habit loop. And for him, that's normal. We need to change this part of the habit loop here. So his cue is he wakes up and cries every two to three hours. We no longer give him a dummy or feed him or whatever we were doing. He learns to do this himself and he gets to go back to sleep for longer. So we're changing that habit loop. And nothing in that situation is going to change unless we tackle that habit or that routine that we're doing every time they give us the cue of waking up crying every two to three hours. And the way that we can change that is with some sleep training. So we can pick a strategy, we can pick super gentle, we can pick super strict, it's up to you, um, and apply it at that time. But that's what's gonna change that habit loop as well as making sure he's not hungry. There's probably some habitual hunger at play um, and not going to be overtired. That's overwhelming, I know. Um, send me a message if you need some more help with that one. Oh, she said I used to feed him. 
but now he's not actually that hungry so try to resettle him so yeah what find out Rachel what are you doing to resettle him instead of feeding him because that's probably his new routine Lou how do you cut out night feeds this 12 month old is taking 150 mils at 2 a.m. and waking at 5 30 okay Lou if it's a bottle it's real easy just cut it to 120 mils tomorrow night and then Monday cut it to 90 mils and then Wednesday try cutting it to 60 mils and then Friday next week so this time next week no bottle and don't go back as you as you decrease that bottle at night increase your solids during the day so offer um, more protein more carbohydrates or a bigger breakfast or a bigger lunch or a bigger dinner um, and if bubs continues to wake at that time it's a habit and they need to put themselves back to sleep which I think your 12 month old can because they're doing it obviously several times a night leading up until that bottle at 2am so they totally have that skill and you are not expecting too much of them to make them do it again Christina says that's the same as my 7 month old over 4 ish hours at night and he also is a shit sleeper during the day <laughs> was that the same as the 2-3 to three hourly wake ups as Rachel Christina so though that shit sleeping during the day is probably contributing to that overtiredness so you're in kind of this overtired cycle Christina um, and to get on top of that I like assisted napping if possible you know go for walks have some really awesome naps happen um, bring in the awake windows to so smaller for a little while while they get on top of their overtiredness really early to bed that kind of thing uh, but don't hesitate to assist for naps for a few days to get on top of that overtiredness, Christina. And by assisting, I mean go for a walk, hold them, feed them, bounce them, rock them. Something in which you know will guarantee you get a good nap out of your child. A couple of days and you'll get on top of that sleep debt and have way more success implementing change at night. Rosalie. My son has just started... Um, I will put him down in his cot in his sleeping bag and he screams till I pick him up so I rock him to sleep and then most nights he wakes up screaming his head off after half an hour maybe an hour being asleep he doesn't want a bottle or anything he just wants up crying like this and it's re recently started I don't know why how I don't know how old your baby is Rosalie but basically Rosalie if we think about that habit loop your son is giving you the cue of and I just love this way of explaining things to people but maybe it's annoying you tell me if it is or tell me if it makes sense your son is waking up and screaming is he standing and screaming in his sleeping bag or is refusing to sleep and screaming you pick him up and rock him to sleep and he goes to sleep for half an hour and then he wakes up again he gives you the cue of screaming and then you have to go in and rock him again so he's in this habit loop we need to change that routine so instead of rocking him if he's standing up I would just lie him down if he stands up again lie him down again and just repeat that until he stays lying down at which point he can then put himself to sleep um, but it's removing the rocking so stop rocking him and it's not I think people get stuck on that because they say to me but if I don't rock him he won't sleep but I promise you he will sleep I promise it's just that people think if I stop rocking I need to replace the rocking with another strategy to get my child to sleep but if they're not a newborn you don't have to get them to sleep they have to get themselves to sleep you have to be the parent and you can support them through that and you can sit with them and um, pick them up if they need to cuddle touch them if they're getting upset talk to them but you don't have to make them go to sleep so and that's a really common thing honestly I talk to so many parents like hundreds every week and they're like if I don't rock him he won't go to sleep or if I don't feed him I can't get him to sleep I promise you he will go to sleep I promise it's just a matter of giving him some space to figure that out and being really patient because it's not as quick as rocking or feeding but he will I promise if he doesn't hit me up um oh god my inbox is gonna be full of people <laughs> Jade, hi Emma, any advice for an overnight weaning? My one year old is exclusively breastfed and still wakes anywhere from two to eight times a night for comfort feeds. Any advice would be appreciated. We've tried formula, bed, and rocking. 
So Jade, I think what I just said is super relevant to you guys. You've tried replacing the boob with formula. You've tried replacing the boob with rocking. What you're trying to replace is one sleep crutch with another. You don't need to. You just need to remove that sleep crutch, which is feed to sleep. Um, and let your one-year-old figure out how to fall asleep on their own. Now, I wouldn't recommend like a cry it out for a one-year-old who's been fed to sleep because it's a massive change going from I fall asleep on mum's breast to I fall asleep exclusively on my own and no one is anywhere to be seen. That's a huge change, right, for a one-year-old who spent 12 months falling asleep on the breast. So instead I would go really quite gentle in this situation. Not gentle as in you're going to be rocking to sleep, but gentle as in staying with your one-year-old. Lie them down when they stand up. Um, pass them their comforter, talk to them, sing to them, give them a cuddle if they need it, pop them back in the cot. But really you need a massive jug of patience for a one-year-old because they're going to take a long time to learn to self-settle probably that first night. You know, you could be looking at 40 minutes plus. Um, and really staying quite calm because a one-year-old gets quite irate. You know, they're like little toddlers. They get either really emotional with us or really angry. So you need to be really patient and really calm and understanding and, um, you know, you can ooze that empathy without oozing sympathy. And the empathy is, hey, Baba, I understand this is super hard because you're used to mum feeding you to sleep. I get it. I get you're frustrated. Um, I get you're upset with me. I understand. Come here. Mum, give you a cuddle. You know, calm down. Okay, good. You're calm. Back in the cot. It's different to sympathy because you don't feel bad about the situation. You don't feel sorry for them because they're not in pain. They're not hungry. You haven't left them alone. They're just struggling. So it's just these tears of temporary frustration as they learn to try to get themselves off to sleep as opposed to tears of emotional distress, you know. Um, so really try to bring the empathy with the bigger kids as opposed to the sympathy. And as parents, I think it's so natural for our first emotion um, to be sympathy, you know. We feel bad and we feel sorry for our kids because they're upset. But sort of on a higher level, if we can bring in the empathy and the consistency um, and the calmness, then we are really successful with sleep training. But it's really hard, I get it, it's, it's so hard. Kate, how do you prevent early wake-ups in the morning? You prevent them um, by a very consistent approach to any wake-ups that occur around 5 o'clock in the morning. So don't get into any bad habits. Um, you know, so if they occur and you know your child's not hungry, don't feed them. Um, or if you know they can self-settle, don't rock them to sleep. Um, that kind of stuff. As well as making sure they don't go to bed overtired, they're not hungry, their room is nice and dark, they're not cold, and their morning nap is not too long. Um, so any of those things encourage early wake-ups. I think I'm getting near the end of my list. Alana. Our 17-month-old stirs a lot through the night but doesn't fully wake. That's pretty normal. She's resettled by using a shusher and a musical glow bug, if need be. So the issue there, though, guys... The issue there is a shusha. I love, I love my shusha. Five-year-old still has it in his room. Soon to be six-year-old. Um, and a musical glow bug both probably require mum and dad to turn them on. So I would be more inclined to just play some white noise. You know, maybe download the shusha app that's going to play all night. Um, and if the 17-month-old wants that glow bug on, I would let them do it themselves because that could become a prop which requires you guys to interfere. Since daylight savings, she's waking at 5.30, used to be 6.30, is having one nap. That's good. Anytime between 12 and 1. She happily winds down during the odd grizzle. During that time, she has her shusha glow bug. I do go into her room to reassure her if she gets really upset. She sleeps no later than 3.34. Okay, 17 months. I want them awake by no later than 3 p.m. So if you want to preserve your nighttime sleep, I think the chunk of sleep from newborn onwards really should be over by 3 p.m. That doesn't mean there's no naps after three. There might be a quick cat nap, you know, 4.30 to five, but the biggest chunk of sleep should be over by three o'clock if you want to preserve your nighttime sleep. So that's a little rule, write that down. Um, 
I'm wondering if I can tweak anything. Yes, your nap. Awake by three. That will help with your early morning starter. And the shusher and the glow bug. Yep, I think they need to go. Kate. My 12 month old is following my sleep schedule, 9.30 till 10, 12.30 to 2.40, then down at 6.30, aiming to be awake at 7. She was doing really well, but recently she's waking from early, early from 6. It's probably daylight savings and waking her sibling. So that she's got good food. I don't think she's overtired, no. Kate's asked me if I think she's overtired. I don't think so, Kate. I think that's probably a daylight savings hangover. And if you can just leave her to resettle herself back to sleep until 7, that will probably resolve itself in a couple of weeks because that was her usual wake up time and now she just needs to adjust. Christine, we had a great routine for my 15 month old twins before starting care. Oh no. Understandably change upset that in a bit. She has school drop off commitments so it's changed by about 20 minutes. We just can't get a good afternoon sleep happening. Currently 6.30 latest nap 9 15 which we get cap at 20 minutes attempting 12 30 ish we get 30 minutes if we're lucky bed oh it's not a lot of day sleep um so we need more day sleep happening there christine i would be talking about what is happening at care and can she reset all the twins into a longer lunchtime sleep they need to go back to sleep Yes, they need more sleep, and I think my little guy fights sleep because he's so tired. I agree. Um, over the weekends, you know, let them catch up, that kind of thing. Um, but I would get your carer to work on resettling into that lunchtime sleep. That's the only thing which is going to teach them at care, to, at, you know, their daycare or carer's house, to take a longer nap, is that they consistently are resettled back to sleep. And they were doing it before, so they totally can do it again. And that will have a massive impact on your nighttime sleep. Casey, I have a nearly seven month old who won't go down before nine. Or if she does, it's a huge drawn out fight and she wakes every one and a half to two hours through the night. So, him actually. Him, sorry. Um, if I get him back down, he wakes ten minutes later. Casey, I feel like from this question you are assisting your baby to sleep. Am I right? Because it's saying that sometimes I can get him back down only for him to wake 10 minutes later. So I think you're making him go to sleep. Whereas I think at seven months the onus can be on him to learn to put himself to sleep. And that is what will be the biggest difference for you guys is that he learns to do it himself. And mum doesn't have to do it for him. And at seven months he totally can, I promise you. Going to bed at nine o'clock at night, so that delayed onset of sleep. Um, if it's not due to having sleep after 3 p.m., so big chunks of sleep after 3 p.m., like I said, not a great thing, um, then it's probably just that he's not overtired enough to be receptible to you assisting him to sleep, which is what happens. As children get older and we still assist them to sleep, so by that I mean we rock them, feed them, pat them, hold them, bounce them, um any of those kind of things. If we do any of that, often as they get older, they need to be very, very overtired to be receptive enough for us to assist them to sleep. And so at nine o'clock, he's very receptive to you assisting him, but at seven, he's like, nee, not that tired, not going to let you assist me to sleep. So probably just shifting the onus onto him at seven months, you got this buddy, you can put yourself to sleep. Jenny, at what age can they start putting themselves to sleep rather than being assisted? So, um, they can start to do it themselves from any age, but that's kind of our goal, to start progressively working towards it from, it's hard to say, I'm going to say 8 to 16 weeks, which is a massive age range. But it's like if we were doing it at 8 weeks, it would be super gentle, you know, like we'd be just rocking the, the bassinet a little bit less each day. Whereas at 16 weeks, we could be going, um, no, you just got to be calm, not not drowsy anymore, you know. So it's different different ages. But um, yeah, we can really gently do it between 8 and 16 weeks. And we can do it quite quickly from 16 weeks onwards. Larissa, ha, seven and a half month old, currently wakes anywhere from four to eight times a night. Most of the time it's a uh, quick resettle, but not always. Uh, yeah, Jenny, totally start trying. So, Larissa, I would want to remove 
either gradually or quickly, whatever it is that you're doing to reset all your seven and a half month old, because I think it's become a crutch for them to get back to sleep. And he's waking up looking for it to get back to sleep again. Rian, my nine and a half month old son has started sleeping through the night. Yay! She worked with one of our sleep consultants when he was four months initially and it was a game changer. Although at that stage she wasn't ready to start sleeping through without a feed. My question now though is that we've had a solid week of him sleeping through, so 12 hours. He has over the last few nights been waking at 3.30ish. My husband is able to resettle him with a cuddle and shushing, but it's odd to go back to that waking again. Yes, it is odd. Is odd a nice way of saying that it's shit <laughs> to get up at that time? Other than the room temp and teething, could something else be missing? Look, Rian, I think, um, there are so many reasons why our kids wake up at night, and largely a lot of them are out of our control and normal. So they woke up because they, I was going to say something rude, they woke up because they knocked their head on the side of the cot, because they learnt to crawl, because they're cutting a molar, uh, because their dinner feels funny in their tummy, because they heard a truck drive past. You know, there's so many reasons why, and it's so normal. But the, the way that it doesn't become an issue for us is that we let them put themselves back to sleep. So don't panic about the why, you know, unless they're losing weight at this age or something really drastic is going on. It's more that, you know, it's just this one wake up. He can totally do it himself and he might be learning to crawl or stand up and that's okay. It's just that he needs to put himself back to sleep. So don't get hung up on the why. It's only one little wake up. It's really normal. Just let him put himself back to sleep. How do you deal with insomniac episodes? Presumably related to development, 15 month old goes through phases where he will wake and be awake for up to four hours crying. Fine when being held, doesn't respond to pain relief, doesn't want a drink of water, not hot or cold. Have resorted to just leaving him for about an hour of crying. Feels like an awfully long time. Oh Papa, that is a long time. And you've hit the nail on the head. He's not in pain and he's not thirsty or hungry. Um, but the thing is, if we go through that cycle of offering them pain relief and offering them water and offering them a cuddle and then deciding to leave the room, that in itself is quite stimulating. So instead, I would probably stick with one strategy, whether it's staying out of the room or sticking in the room and being really boring. Um, but I wouldn't go through that cycle of offering all those different things. I would just be a little bit less interactive, a little bit more boring, a bit more consistent with my approach. And it will probably see that awake period a lot, you know, shortened down a lot quicker than if we keep going through that, those stages of offering pain relief and, and water and all that kind of stuff. Rosie. I wonder if I can see. No, I can't. I don't know what the battery on my phone's like. I can't see the number either. But let's just keep going unless I get cut off. <laughs> Rosie, my boys, 18 months and 3 years, share a room. They go down well, but the youngest will wake around 4.35. And then usually wakes the eldest. <laughs> How can we get him to reset it without waking his big brother? Rosie, I would move the big brother into my room for a week so that it wasn't an issue. And I would leave the little brother to it for a week. And that way, any noises that he makes, you know, which would usually bother you, won't bother you because the little the big brother's not in there. And then once he's sleeping through to a reasonable time, put them back in the same room together. Kendall. Oh, that was, I saw you guys with your funny little questions. Tegan thinks that I could use her son as an example in the video, but that he would probably be bad for business. So I'm dying to know, Tegan, what he is like. Stephanie, how can I teach my 18 month old to self settle? through the night. To, uh, Stephanie, that is a very loaded question. There are so many ways we could do it. Um, we can sit with him, we can leave him to it, we can leave the room, um, we can come and go, you know, like some control crying, space soothing sort of thing. It really depends on his temperament and what his current kind of crutch or um, sleep association is that we need to change. Laverne, weaning my seven and a half month old off a night feed, one feed at two and one at five and their bottles. Okay, cool. That is easy. Laverne, I would wean the 5am bottle first, just cut it down by 30 mils every couple of nights. And then I would probably wait another couple of weeks and I would wean the 1am 
or the Turanian bottle because in a couple of weeks he will switch to food first and probably eat a bit more solids during the day as he hits eight months and then you very easily will be able to drop that Turanian bottle. But yeah, I would drop that 5 a.m. one first because if he has a bottle at two, he's probably not really that hungry at five. It's probably more an early wake up. Okay. Amanda, what is sleeping through the night? Seven till seven? So, um, yeah, Amanda, that is an interesting question because, you know, Plankett will say sleeping through the night's eight, eight hours. Other people will say six. Um... And I was at a coffee group recently where one of the mums said, oh, my, my three-month-old sleeps through the night. And everyone was really amazed. And another mum asked her, you know, how she managed to drop all her night feeds to teach her three-month-old to sleep through the night. And she said, well, I still feed her at night. You know, she still has two feeds, but she sleeps all night. So everyone kind of has this different understanding around the terminology of sleeping through the night. So we will generally be quite specific and we'll say sleeping through the night without a night feed or sleeping through the night with a night feed, which would mean either way, it's all night with zero or one night feeds. Um, Amanda said at six months, should they still be having a night feed? So at six month old, six months old Amanda, most of my clients would still be having a night feed because chances are lots of them have only just started solids and we're just, you know, we're just beginning that whole solids journey. Um, and so until they're really established, I wouldn't try to drop that night bottle. And babies go through so many growth spurts between zero and six months that keeping one night feed, whether it's breast or bottle, you know, just means that we're, we're more likely to have really good consistent night sleep as opposed to, oh, they slept 12 hours at five months and then a week later they need a feed in the night again, you know. Um, so, yeah, yes, they still probably need a night feed. Okay. Now I have this issue of trying to read your questions from this live feed. Dahlia, my 13 month old, was she used to self settle since cruising will practice walking. She refused to settle for two hours a night and is screaming. I had assisted her to sleep and started waking up three times again, although I'm sticking to the routine promptly but started to refuse naps. Um, it's not time to cut to one nap, Dahlia, and if she is awake cruising and practicing walking, I would leave her to it. She can walk around the cot all she wants, and then when she's ready to fall back to sleep, she can do that, whether you sit with her and comfort her, but I wouldn't assist her back to sleep. You know, just because she woke up and needed to do some walking doesn't mean that she can't still self-settle, I promise you. Emma, we follow your sleep routines. For a 15 and a half month old, he's taking longer to fall asleep for the morning nap and also sometimes for the afternoon sleep. Is it time to drop the morning nap? Um, hey Emma, we are talking about nighttime sleep today, so I will just leave your question and answer some more nighttime questions today. Otherwise, we'll get, I'll get really sidetracked. Leanne, my six and a half month old with good naps is waking twice a night, 10 and 3. I don't think he's hungry. He's on two solid meals a day and has done one night feed while away on holiday, you talked about cutting and your question is cut off. Why does Facebook do this to me? Um, so I'm guessing you want to know how to cut back down the to one night feed. I would cut at six and a half months, that 10 p.m. feed, oh, I don't think he's hungry at that time. If you've done dinner and you've done a bottle, you know, it's highly unlikely that he's still hungry for um, a night feed at 10 o'clock. So... That, to be honest, would be the time where I would probably try and drop that feed at 10 p.m. And then you'll probably get a feed sometime after midnight, which would be way better than 10 and 3. And then, you know, six and a half months on one feed is pretty pretty good, pretty normal. And you'll find that that will probably quite naturally go away on its own. Um, if not, then more like between seven and eight months, you can drop that feed as well. Great. Facebook does not like showing me your old questions. Okay. Gemma, my 16 month old can self settle during the day. She's amazing, but at seven, she's so hard to put to sleep. Um, Gemma, seven o'clock is quite late for a 16 week old to go to bed. So potentially she's overtired at that time. 
um, I would try moving bedtime earlier and so usually in the evening if they're hard this should be the easiest time of day for them to go to bed honestly because there's a huge you know increase in that homeostatic pressure to sleep at bedtime and they should have had a bath and have a really full belly of milk or formula or food um, and you usually just let them feed and feed and feed until they're all tanked up and, and ready to sleep so if that's a hard settle I wonder if she's overtired and needs to be going to bed a bit earlier um, or if she's still hungry so I would either increase her bottle, let her spend more time on the breast, increase her dinner, um, and try moving everything a bit earlier in the evening and see if that helps with your, your evening settles. And download our routines too to make sure she's not sleeping too much during the day. Michelle, my nine and a half month old, can be easily settled to sleep by rocking in the cot until almost asleep. Before I leave the room, I'm stuck with figuring how to go from rocking to self-settling. I'm guessing the rest of your questions cut off, Michelle. So, Michelle, at nine and a half months, I would probably just stop rocking. So I would work on um, popping him down calm but awake and not rocking. And he'll probably stand up, to be honest. And when he stands up or crawls or gets on all fours, I would just lie him back down. And he stands up and I would lie him back down until he understood that I need to lie down in order to go to sleep tonight. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. Paul, what can I do to encourage my six-week-old... Oh, Paula. I was thinking, cool, we've got a dad, but it's Paula. Sorry. Um, my six-week-old six week old on the right track for good sleep habits. Obviously, I can't sleep train yet. So if you're wanting to encourage really good sleep overnight for a six-week-old Paula, work on making sure they're not going to bed hungry in the evening. Um, so, you know, really good feeds during the day, good feeds at bedtime. Bubs isn't going to bed overtired. And work on resettling at six weeks in the bassinet or the cot so if bubs wakes up and they're not due for a feed and they're not hungry try to see if you can settle them in the cot or the bassinet with padding or rocking or something so they learn this is where i actually go to sleep um and that will help you know establish those really healthy sleep habits long term that this is where bub sleeps at night Sophia, how many night feeds does a four and a half month old baby need currently baby is waking twice a night midnight at 3.30, that's pretty normal at four and a half months. You could probably cut that down to once if um, you really wanted to, Sophia, but I just need to check that Bubs was growing and thriving and, and that kind of thing. Liv, 20 month old, is waking up every two hours wanting milk. Um, no night terrors, the crying escalates. Liv, yeah, 20 month olds are very stubborn and very determined. And, you know, if we think about that habit loop for your 20 month old Liv, Basically, the cue is every two hours, wake up um, crying. Yep, waking up crying every two hours. And then mum comes in with milk as the habit or the routine. And then the, the result and the reward is that both of you go back to sleep for a couple of hours. And then Bubs wakes up screaming again at two hours later. The only way to change that, that habit loop is for us to change the, habit, the routine or the habit. So stop giving the milk and work on some self-settling strategies up here instead. It will take longer than giving the milk, it won't be as easy, but that's what will change, ultimately will change your habit loop, is if we change that routine that we're stuck in, which is giving them the milk. Michelle will give it a go, good. I like hearing that you guys are gonna try this stuff, that's really awesome. Okay, so I've got time for one more question if anyone wants to ask something. And then my tea is almost gone. But if you have missed it, start of this video, I'll post it on the wall, my top three tips for establishing really good nighttime sleep. Um, obviously good daytime sleep helps with good nighttime sleep, so grab the link from the comments, which is my routines, download them, they'll come into your inbox, check your inbox for them. If you need some one-on-one -on -one help, send us a message or check out the website for our sleep packages. Obviously, we have consultants all across New Zealand and Australia. Uh, we can come into your home, we can work with you on the phone, or we do email consults, we do big sleep talks. Um, so yeah, we're available for that one-on-one -on -one help and support if you need it, guys. Okay, Amy. Amy Louise Linf Linford Hazel, that is a long name. My two-week-old isn't sleeping great at all. I know she's tiny after a feed. I put her down after a feed and a sleep. I think this mum is tired. <laughs> she may sleep two hours, she may sleep 10 minutes. 
she is ending up sleeping with me as I need sleep because I have a two and a half year old. Oh, a toddler and a newborn. Okay, hard work, Amy. But honestly, your baby's two weeks old. It's just about survival at this point, you know? Good feeding, good burping, so there's not wind in their tummy disrupting the sleep. Really good swaddle, really good white noise, and recruit some help if you can from dad, neighbors, friends, so you can have some naps during the day. Um, yeah, she's two weeks old, hang in there. It, we, you've got a toddler, you know it gets better. Okay, Sophie, my five month old goes down at eight most nights and wakes around 4.30. Often I put the dummy in and he will go back to sleep for another hour and a half before I feed him. Does this mean he's nearly off needing a night feed? Um, yeah, maybe nearly off needing a night feed. Your bedtime's quite late, so Bubs is probably having a feed close to 8 o'clock at night. So in my books that would count as a nighttime feed because it's after 7. So, you know, having a feed at 7 and then 5.30 or 8 and then 5.30 is, is still two feeds a night between 7 and 7. But if we move that, you know, if we move that to 7, it would probably mean that Bubs went to bed before 7 and just had a feed around 4.30 and then slept till morning. So 7 maybe in the morning. But yeah, I think they're ready for no more than one night feed at this stage, if that makes sense. Okay, so I am officially out of peppermint tea and nearly out of voice so i am going to leave you guys but thank you so much for joining me live if i've missed your question i will jump in and type some answers out for you guys so don't panic facebook is a bit funny about which questions it shows me during the live which is why i collect them beforehand as well um if you have liked this video and you've got some sleep tips out of it i would love you to share it with your friends hit the share button hit the thumbs up button and let me know you enjoyed it um if you need some one-on-one -on -one help jump on the website I'll pop that link in the comments as well. Send us, send us a message on Facebook if you need some help. Um, and otherwise, I do hope that you all get some more sleep over the weekend. If you're working on nighttime sleep from any tips you've got from this video, I would love to hear how you get on. So jump into the video thread and um, let us know how you get on implementing those changes. It's great to hear when things work or if they don't work and you need some more help. Okay, cool. Thanks so much for joining me tonight and I will see you all shortly. Bye.